much, Tim. Happy birthday, church. If you don't know, it's Pentecost today. That's why so many folks are wearing red. And if you're not, that's okay too, but we're thrilled that you're here. Pentecost is the day of the church here in, in which we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. Pentecost was and is a Jewish harvest festival and religious festival that was celebrated 50 days after Passover. And in the Christian tradition, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, as recorded in Acts chapter 2. According to the, Spirit, this, according to the story, the Spirit comes in power. It descends with tongue-like flames upon Jesus' earliest followers, so hence all of the red. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. But for now, I want you to know that we're especially glad you're joining us for worship. Whether you're here in person, you're about to arrive in person, uh, you're watching face via Facebook Live, or watching via YouTube later this week. We're thrilled that you're worshiping with us. Because it's Pentecost, we want to take a church family photo after worship. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is after worship, after the benediction and the postlude and the chimes, I'm going to ask you to head out the front doors and we'll take a, a photo on the front steps. If this is your first time or you're not a church member, it doesn't matter. You're family today, okay? So we'd love for you to be in that photo with us. We're also going to have cupcakes out there to celebrate the birthday of the church. Let me give you just a handful of announcements before we move into worship. Mask updates. Based on what I've read in the newspaper recently and seen in social media and saw yesterday in Lowe's, some of us are thrilled, some of us are still feeling whiplash about masks. Our reopening committee met on Thursday and they told me as beautiful as your faces are, they'd like for you to keep wearing your masks for the time being if you're able, okay? We're, the, the trade-off is that we're lifting our 50-person max for worship, so you can invite all your friends and all of their children to worship next week. Okay, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Those are my kids. I'll, I'll claim them. We're asking you to continue to wear masks during worship in the sanctuary. Uh, but the trade-off is you can invite as many people as you want. We're just asking for folks to give one another reasonable space. If you have a committee meeting or a small group meeting, you can talk as a small group and decide whether you want to wear masks or not. Um, if we end up with 300 people in worship next week, we might rethink all of that. But for now, we feel like we can move forward safely without a limit on the number of people here. We're going to post more updates on the website and the e-news in the coming days. Our summer sermon series is starting next week. We're calling it Childhood Stories of the Bible Revisited. It starts next Sunday with the Tower of Babel. We're going to be talking about Noah's Ark, Jonah, Queen Esther, Samson and Deliah, Delilah, and some of those great stories that we remember from childhood. When we reread them, we'll find that they're inevitably more complex uh, than we thought that, that we, they were, or as they were presented to us when we were children but we'll inevitably find new and valuable meanings. Lastly, let's see if I can, oh, two things. If you will, pull out an attendance card from the pew back while we're here. We ask that everyone fills these out simply so we have a record of your attendance. If you're new or new-ish, or this is your first time in a long time, we'd love to get your updated email and so forth as well. One last plug. Next Sunday for the Sunday School Hour, Ter Terry Maples of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship of Virginia is going to be joining us during our Zoom Sunday School Hour, talking about the future of the church. We'd love for you to join us for that. We're going to pick his brain and say, where do we go from here? What are other churches talking about? Where are other churches going from here? Help us figure it out. So we'd love for you to join us information will be in the e-newsletter and on the website if you'd like to join us. That's all from me for now. Welcome to worship. Please join me in the call to worship this morning. You will find the text in your um, program of service 
Uh, if you will respond in the bold text. Our God, we, your people, stand ready and open to receive the flame of your spirit. Give us the ability to speak your truth so that others may hear. May that which was of stone be now transformed into life. May we who receive your light dwell together in your love. Bestow your compassion on those who suffer in mind, spirit, and body. Make us bold to bring light to the dark places, warmth to the cold places, and love to the empty places. Spirit of the living God, fill our hearts, minds, and souls to overflowing. O oh God, we, your people, celebrate the mystery of your never-ending love. Now please stand as you are able and join us in our first hymn. have a number of prayer updates that came into us this week or 
just very recently even today. First of all, we mourn the passing of Doris Palmer, who always sat in the next to the last pew over near Fran and Frank there in the corner. She died last Sunday evening quite peacefully. Her daughter Joyce Patterson and her other family will be celebrating her life and um, burying her in New Jersey. We have uh, some other news. First of all, congratulations, Deb Fisher, for getting all A's on that uh, intensive online course that she was undergoing last week, which meant she did not get to come to the picnic. Um, we celebrate with her and all the other William and Mary college students and high school students and those in the family who are graduating elsewhere today. Uh, we do also need to pray for Deb's aunt, Joyce Gill, who has recently um, been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, which is why we still wear masks. <laughs> um, we need to pray with Dee Grimm for her son Gavin, who is experiencing extreme health issues. Dee, thank you for sharing that. And we learned this morning that Earl McLean has been in the hospital this week. Um, Bobby needs your prayers as well as Earl. And we pray for the ceasefire to hold and make it become lasting peace between Palestine and Israel. And today we have a special prayer for Pentecost. It's written by a Mennonite pastor, Mary Ann Isaac. Let us pray. Holy Spirit creator, in the beginning you moved over the waters. From your breath, all creation drew life. Without you, life turns to dust. Bring to mind where you have created life this week. For this we give you praise. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit Counselor, by your inspiration, the prophets spoke and acted in faith. You clothed them in power to be bearers of your word in the quiet of this moment. Counsel us as to where we have lived out of our brokenness and caused harm to you to ourselves, to others, to the earth. Holy Spirit, hear our prayers of quiet repentance. Holy Spirit, sanctifier, you created us children of God. You make us the living temple of your presence. You intercede within us with sighs too deep for words. We receive your forgiveness. Bring to mind ways to seek reconciliation in relationships that are strained or broken. Give us the strength and courage to follow through. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, power. You came as fire to Jesus' disciples. You gave them voice before the rulers of this world. Bring to mind the name of one person to whom you are sending us this week, that we may share the words and action that come from your fire and witness to the reality of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. And may the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught his own disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning. If you all would like to follow along with me for our scripture reading, we are reading the entire scripture from Acts. There are Bibles in the pews in front of you, and if you'd like to follow along, we're going to begin on page 831 with Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and then 12 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a loud sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit had given them the ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them heard, each of them, heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they, were, they asked, are, these not, are not all of these who are speaking Galatians? And how is that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed to them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portions in heaven above, and sigh on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The, sh the sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Sydney. You have to wonder sometimes if the gospel writers snuck jokes into the text. The comment about the disciples all being filled with new wine, which is apparently especially potent. And then Peter saying, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. They're not drunk yet. Thank you, Tim, as well, and the virtual choir for leading us. It's such a gift to have musicians uh, really from all over the world join us in worship here, one of the gifts of the pandemic. Because it's Pentecost, I have to start today's sermon with a favorite joke of mine. Some of you have probably heard it, but I hope you can bear with it. What do you call someone who speaks three languages? Trilingual, yeah, that's right. What do, you, what do you call someone who speaks two languages? Bilingual, that's right. What do you call someone who only speaks one language? American, American. that's right. <laughs> it's not entirely true. There's certainly truth in it though. I know several of you speak multiple languages, but we as Americans are not necessarily known for our ability to speak multiple languages. My wife and I both speak Spanish to varying degrees. She is much better than I am. I am not fluent by a long shot, but I might characterize my Spanish proficiency as adventurous. I think I know enough to try to convey certain ideas. At least I'll risk it. Beth and I were in Spain for a trip about 10 years ago, and this one morning we found ourselves trying to catch a train to Madrid. And we ended up on this bus trying to get to the train station. We had no idea where the train station was or where to hop off the bus to make it in time. And so there was one gentleman on the bus and Beth is much shyer than I am and much less likely to ask for help in a situation like that. But I had this feeling if I didn't say something, we'd miss our train. And so I said to the man in the clearest you know, Virginia accent, but Spanish that I could muster. Donde esta el estacion del tren? 
hoping against hope that those were the words were at least reasonably close to what I thought I was saying. He looked at me with some confusion, and my recollection, Beth may remember this differently, but my recollection is that Beth gently patted my arm and gave the man a knowing look and began to explain in Spanish that we were trying to figure out where to hop off the bus so we could catch our train. He did help us find our stop. We caught our train. And I, I'm convinced to this day that he helped us avoid a really bad travel day. We ended up enjoying the rest of our trip. There are so many stories like that I feel like we could probably tell. I wish my Spanish was better, but I'm grateful for the ways in which the ability to speak or even attempt to speak a different language fosters connection where there might not otherwise be connection. The comedian Trevor Noah, who's the host of The Daily Show and who's South African, says in his memoir, when you make the effort to speak someone else's language, even if it's just basic phrases here and there, you're saying to them, I see you as a human being. That willingness to step across the threshold, as uncomfortable as it might be, the barrier created by different languages, signals a willingness to cross all the barriers that separate us one from another. It signals a willingness to see the other, not just as an other, but as a bearer of the divine image, both of us beloved by the divine one. On the day of Pentecost, as Sidney described, Jesus' disciples are hunkered down, praying and waiting for God to reveal to them what's next. Their numbers are small. The book of Acts says there's something like me merely 120 believers in the wake of Jesus' resurrection and ascension. It wasn't a socially or politically mandated cap on the number who had gathered, but the Holy Spirit would soon blow past it anyway. And lo and behold, this violent yet divine wind unexpectedly fills the house. Tongue-like flames descend upon the believers, and all are filled with the Holy Spirit, which sends them out into the streets, where thousands of Jewish pilgrims from all over the known world have gathered for the Pentecost festival. And the Holy Spirit opens the mouths of believers, and they start sharing good news about Jesus, not just in Aramaic or Hebrew, but in every language imaginable so that everyone with an earshot can understand the message. Greek, Latin, Egyptian, Parthian, Syriac, the list goes on and on. Here's the thing. My hunch is that on that first day of Pentecost, on the birthday of the church, the Holy Spirit could have come rushing in just about any way with any miracle you might have expected, whatever makes the biggest bang. And yet the miracle of Pentecost is the bridging of this simple yet profound barrier and gap between people, language. It doesn't erase their differences. They aren't all speaking and hearing the same language like before the Tower of Babel, but the Holy Spirit is able to transcend their differences in the moment to connect them in this moment, and not only to bind them as a church, but to transform their understanding of their place and their purpose in the world. The temptation of the Pentecost story is to try to understand what's going on, to try to make sense of this speaking in tongues thing, to try to untangle the mass of theological questions that the story poses. As I was preparing for my sermon this week, I was bumping around a little bit online, and it would have been easy for me to accidentally wade into an online argument about what exactly happened on Pentecost. Was it really wind, or was it just the sound of wind? What in the world were the tongues of fire? Were they literal or symbolic? Did the believers really speak different languages, or did everyone there simply hear them in their own languages? But I think any arguments like that miss the point of the story entirely, which is entirely about the power of God's Spirit 
breaking into the world, doing a new thing, crossing barriers and spreading outward with the divine message of love for the world, starting right here, right here. I saw an article this last week in Christianity Today. It was entitled, Back Without a Bang. Returning to church won't be the celebration we once imagined. And I have to be honest, I couldn't read the entire article because it was behind a paywall of all things. But the title in the beginning of the article struck me, this week of all weeks in which I was thinking about Pentecost, which is all about a big bang of sorts. Do you remember last March when we closed? Do you remember how you imagined the future? That maybe we'd, re maybe not Deb, but everybody else was sitting here thinking, we'll be back in a couple weeks and we'll all be hugging and high-fiving. We had no idea we'd be wearing these things over a year later. But does anyone want to try to convince me that each step we've taken out of the pandemic hasn't been a celebration? Come on, man. Ch channeling a famous politician there. <laughs> if you were here at the picnic last Sunday, you know it was a celebration. It felt so good to be together and eat together. It felt like the Holy Spirit was connecting us together and binding us or rebinding us as a community together after all this time. Each Sunday that we've gathered in worship and taken one more step back to normalcy, it's felt like a celebration. When we've started singing again, when we've snuck in hugs, when we've met someone in person for the first time that we'd only ever connected with via Zoom in all these months. Each blood drive and vaccine drive that we've had at the church to serve our community, each new face that walks in the door, each care package we dropped off to school-aged children who are struggling mightily this year. Folks, the Spirit is at work in this place. I've sensed it every, ever since I got connected with you guys. God's Spirit is at work here. I don't think it's unique to this church, but I don't want you to doubt for a second that it's not true here. The Holy Spirit is empowering us to be church together and not just the 120 folks who are already part of the fold, but a lot of folks who are yet to step in the door. And whether we like it or not, the same Spirit is gonna send us out those doors into a world that desperately needs to hear words that are Spirit-filled and filled with love. This is a shameless plug. Many of you have probably heard that we're taking a trip next year to the Holy Land, a year from now. In fact, a year from now, some of us will be there. We're going with a group from the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship of Virginia. And if you have any interest in going, reach out. We'd love to figure out how we can make it work. If you don't go, don't fret. I promise we'll bring back lots of stories and pictures. But I've been with CBI Virginia before, and the last time I was there, we happened to be in Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost. We happened to go to the room where, according to church tradition, the events of today's scripture reading took place. It's known as the cynicle, if you want to Google it later. It's a Latin word for dining room. It's also supposedly where the Last Supper happened. And so we found ourselves in these, this room filled with Christian pilgrims from all over the world, gathered together to pray and to remember and to learn. Christians of all colors and stripes, nationalities, political backgrounds, languages. Each one a testament to God's ongoing work in the world and the Spirit's work. I took a recording while I was there. Uh, it's about 30 seconds and I'd like to share it with you. It's hard to make out the individual voices in the room, 
but I hope it will give you a sense of what it sounded like with these pilgrims talking and praying in dozens of different languages. Fran wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Can you hear it though? It's the sound of the Holy Spirit at work, connecting people to God, to creation, and to one another. It's chaotic and beautiful all at the same time, just like the first Pentecost. It was an electric feeling to be in the midst of this crowded room, not understanding a word of what was being said by the other pilgrims, and yet feeling this sense of communion, that we were in the same place for the same reason, that the same God had drawn us together, and that the same God was empowering us as disciples to go forth and transform the world in love, and joy, and peace, and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and gentleness. So happy birthday, church. Williamsburg Baptist Church, global church. Somehow against all odds, we made it another year. We may even yet find that we're thriving on the other side, not on our own merits, but thanks to the power of a spirit that is not done with us yet. Who knows where the Spirit will lead us next? I have no idea, but I'm eager to find out. I hope you are too. Amen. Although we are still not passing the plate in the sanctuary, there are many ways you can contribute to help the church meet its many missions. Uh, you can go online, visit WilliamsburgBaptist.com, and the plates are on the side. You can drop your uh, offering in those plates before you depart. Now, if you'll please join me in the offertory prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you can satisfy our every desire and need. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give you for the effective growth of your kingdom. Amen.
Alex and Sydney and Janessa, will you all come up here? If you're comfortable doing so. You might not have known that you might come stand up here. We have gifts for you and you want to recognize. You can stand right here if you will. These three women come each making a significant step this year, crossing the threshold from high school or college into the future. We want you to know how, how thrilled we are for you guys and how proud we are of each of you. We know that you all have accomplished some amazing things already, and we know that amazing things are in store. We also recognize Amy Corlack uh, and, uh, and others who are connected. You can read all about it in this insert in the bulletin. There's some really amazing things listed on here, and we'll be celebrating with each of you. Kylie Hartman Caballero also stopped by this week. Some of y'all know this name, that name. But we continue to see God at work in your lives as a church. We promise to continue walking alongside you in the future, whatever that means. We know that some of you will stay local and some of you will be further distance. But we hope and pray that you will always find a home in this place and know that you can always come back. And that we're rooting for you and praying for you every step of the way. We wanted to get you a gift that would somehow convey our love and gratitude and prayers for you. And it's a, it's a small gift. <laughs> it really is. Those of you sitting in the pews probably can't see it, but this is a coin in here. It's, um, it's called the widow's mite. There's a story in scripture where Jesus and his disciples are sitting in the temple and they're watching the temple treasury and everyone's putting their money in. And this widow comes forward and she takes these two pennies that she has she sticks them in the treasury, and Jesus says, of all the people that have contributed to God's work in this place, she contributed the most because she contributed all that she has to live on. And so I have one of these in my office, and it reminds me on my worst days when I think that I don't have anything to contribute meaningfully to the world or to God's kingdom. That maybe if I just give my two cents worth, that will be enough. <laughs> and that God will somehow bless and multiply it for God's glory. And so I hope that you will treasure these old, old coins and look at them from time to time. Remember that each of you has something to contribute to the world, to your communities, and also to God's kingdom.
for the benediction. We really would love for you after the postlude and the chimes to head out the front of the church and we'll take a family photo of everyone that's gathered here today. I wonder if you'll hold out your hands if you are comfortable doing so as we receive this Pentecost blessing from Jan Richardson. On the day when you're wearing your certainty like a cloak and your sureness goes before you like a shield and a sword, may the sound of God's name spill from your lips as you have never heard it before. May your knowing be undone. May mystery confound your understanding. May the divine rain down in strange syllables, yet with an ancient familiarity and knowing born in the blood and the ear and the tongue, bringing the clarity that, not, that comes not in stone or in steel, but in fire and flame. May there come one searing word, enough to bear you to the bone, enough to set your heart ablaze, enough to make you whole again. Amen. Thanks be to God.